In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this Mercy Sunday, the Lord comes into our midst to offer us encouragement and consolation. And so let us be open to that peace that the Lord grants us by asking forgiveness of our sins and be confident of his love and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have you came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to my God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace that you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for the praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you may have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the, disciples, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the mark, nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked and stood in their midst and he said to them, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it in my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you, have may, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, it's good to be with all of you, and I pray that uh, these days of seclusion have been an opportunity for God's many graces to work in your life. Today, as we hear this gospel, we might hear with a little bit of envy in our hearts, for after all, these first disciples of Jesus had the experience of Jesus standing in their midst when he rose from the dead. You can imagine the exhilaration, the joy, the great surprise. And yet, as we look carefully at this gospel, it's very clear that it is a message for us, even highlighting, as the gospel does, the doubt of Thomas. Jesus compares his kind of lacking faith with our own, for we are the ones that Jesus speaks of and speaks to. And he says to us this day, blessed are you even though you have not seen you believe. And that inability to really see, at it, that is to be present as we usually do uh, on Sunday coming for Mass and as we gather for different events makes that faith in which we find ourselves not able to see and yet called to believe all the more important. We in these days aren't able to see because weddings that were scheduled can't go on and also, when those who have died, we can't gather to comfort those who mourn the loss. We also, of course, miss our gathering as parishes on Sunday. And yet, even though there is that distance, that inability to have the kind of experience that we ordinarily count on to nourish our faith, the Lord says to us, blessed are you who believe and yet have not seen, have not had those experiences. That is the kind of faith that unites us in this time of separation. It's the kind of faith that motivates you to watch these televised masses and find strength as you gather with your family, knowing that the Lord is present in your own prayer, in your own homes. It's the kind of faith that is prompting our pastors to do so much in keeping contact with you as they make phone calls, they write letters, or maybe organize prayer groups over the telephone and the internet to say the rosary. There are ways too in which we see that comforting faith come in the lives of so many. This past week, I was speaking to a woman who lost her husband to the coronavirus on Easter Sunday. And she told me how comforted she was that one of the 24 priests that volunteered and that we trained to be able to go and to be with the dying was present to her husband. It was such a comfort that she was, he was able to receive the sacraments of the church before he died. It was that kind of faith that allowed her to be comforted. Even though she couldn't be present with her husband, she knew that the Lord was present. And so today, as we continue being sequestered in our homes at distance from one another, we hear the words of the Lord in the gospel designed particularly for us. He says to us, be consoled. You are blessed. Blessed are you 
that even though you do not see, even though you can't come together, you still believe. And so as we continue the Mass today, let us take a consolation in knowing that the Lord came back from the dead, entered that room with those disciples to give us that precise message that our faith is blessed even though we do not see. Stand with me now as we offer our faith, the faith that binds us together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We bring now our prayers before our merciful and loving Lord. For the whole church, suffering from isolation from one another and separation from the sacraments, may Christ bring us comfort and strength in our spiritual communion with him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that Christ's gift of peace may settle in the hearts of all the human family and guide us away from violence and revenge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May, the, may God, the merciful Father, bring comfort and healing to victims and survivors of sexual abuse within the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face economic uncertainty because of the pandemic, may God graciously look upon their needs and bring them relief and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, as we celebrate this Divine Mercy Sunday, we ask you to hear our prayers through Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those that have been brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even the heavenly powers. With the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of all. Oh, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bring us to a blessing, Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I want to assure all of you that you're, you remain in my prayers. And I once again want to publicly thank all those who are making this available uh, through the ABC network uh, on Sunday. Our staff here from the communications department, everyone else cooperating with it, and especially ABC. And I want to offer this word of encouragement to all of our pastors. Uh, they're working very hard to keep your community together. Uh, they do so because, as I said in my homily, they have a faith that inspires them that even though there is a distance among us and uh, place at this time, uh, they still are motivated to uh, reach out to you and be a part of, of your life and to be that comfort uh, that so often comes in our faith. So may God continue to bless you and thank you for your support of our pastors for all of the good works of the church in this time. As I said before, while the buildings may be closed, the church is not. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you and your families in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen, shout to Hosanna,